Hello, everyone, and welcome. Wow, what a difference a year makes. <clears throat> I have to say that life in Washington is always hectic, but it's a whole new ball game since the November elections. It all feels very far away as I look out on this beautiful scenery and feel the sun on my face here in Long Beach, but life as we have known it has changed, and we need to realize that. As this theme of our meeting suggests, we are going beyond the boundaries of what we know. I was at, event, at an event a few months ago <clears throat> at which one of our colleagues from the University of Maryland School of Dentistry posed these questions. What could this changing landscape for healthcare mean for dental care? What opportunities could there be out there now that we've never had before? Are there windows for us to break new ground? We just don't know yet, <clears throat> but it is our job to constantly look for those windows to make our work relevant and to leverage any opportunity we can to put oral health at the forefront in its rightful place, no matter what else is going on in our politics. And it's harder for people to not listen to us. Some of you may know uh, about the Interprofessional Education Collaborative, or IPEC. This is an entity that was formed in 2009 specifically to allow various health professions to come together to actually talk to one another, to learn from one another, and to boldly acknowledge that patient care is not about individual body parts. What's interesting is that dentistry, that IDEA, continues to lead IPEC as I serve as its president. There are now 20 health professions represented in IPEC, including schools of osteopathic medicine, allopathic medicine, social work, pharmacy, nursing, and many others, and yet dentistry is the one that brings everyone together. Adia is also deeply involved with an organization in Washington called FASHIP, the Federation of Associations of Schools of the Health Professions. These are my CEO counterparts in the other health professions. We are so committed to the idea of working together and sharing ideas in this group that we've actually co-located our offices. In the beginning of 2015, it was just ADEA and the Association of American Medical Colleges in the new building that they had built as their quarters. <clears throat> but we're now together with organizations that educate physician assistants, veterinarians, nurses, and physicians, all under one roof and giving us the opportunity to get our message about oral health and dental care far beyond just our own community. It's making a difference. Those of you who follow health policy are sure to know the publication Health Affairs, shown on the screen. It's the number one health policy journal in the world. And this past fall, for the first time ever, they dedicated an entire issue to oral health. What's even better is that there was such a thirst for this content on oral health that it broke their social media records and had the highest level of downloads. And we, Adia, were the founding sponsor of this issue. We're making a difference. This is the third consecutive speech I've given at an Adia annual session where I've pointed out that things are pretty good for us using an important measure for our potential students. Dentistry, yet again, is the number one job in America, according to US News and World Report. You have a little gift on your chairs to remind you of this, and you can pull it out and stick a note to cheer you up on a bad day. You know, and looking at the students in the room over here from the council, you now have more evidence to go back to your parents and tell them that what you knew you were doing all along was just the right thing. You chose well. Dentists are ranked number one. Orthodontists are number five. Oral maxillofacial surgeons are number nine. Prostodontists are number 21. Sorry, Dr. Garcia. Dental hygienists are number 32. Um, dental assistants are number 100 of all the professions and jobs in America. And the only jobs in the top 10 that weren't in healthcare were statistician and computer systems analyst. And you know, who really wants to do that anyway? Of course, they, of course they'd say the same to us, but we're winning, so it's fine. People pay attention to these types of things. And importantly, people who are weighing their career options are paying attention. Consider these facts. In the last cycle, 
there were nearly 12,000 applicants to dental school for less than 6,000 first year slots. Our four year rolling average remains constant, which is not the case for all health professions. We haven't seen a big dip, dip like many others have seen. Competition for acceptance into dental school remains strong. We continue to receive, on average, about 10 applications per applicant. Over the past two application cycles, we've seen a continued increase in the number of African American and Hispanic applicants. Additionally, in the 2017 cycle, this, this current cycle, there were 42 American Indian Alaskan Native applicants to dental school, a nearly 50% increase over the number who had applied just two years ago. The number of applications to nearly all advanced education programs and residencies was up substantially this past cycle, with 10% increases in applicants to uh, AEGD programs, and indeed to dental public health and oral and maxillofacial surgery programs. Oral and maxillofacial radiology uh, continues to rise, up 27% for the most recent cycle. We must be doing something right. You are doing something right. <clears throat> Demand for what you provide at your schools and programs remains very strong. You're making a difference, and it's being felt around the world. In about six weeks, we'll join our sister association in Europe, the Association for Dental Education in Europe, uh, at a meeting in London for plenary and poster presentations from across Europe, North America, and many other countries to see what others are experiencing in their work to educate and produce highly skilled, prepared, compassionate dental professionals. Our new digital annual report for 2016 is up on our website now, and I would encourage you to read it to learn more about our strategic priorities and how we work to serve our members and promote oral health at this vibrant association. Many of you have heard me say this before, and I will say it again. We need to work within and outside of our borders and our profession to help people understand that the mouth is part of the body, which is part of a human being, which is part of a family, which is part of a community, which is part of our shared world. The theme of this conference is Beyond Boundaries. I encourage you to take advantage of the minds that are gathered here to talk about the shared commitment of your colleagues to continue to push ourselves on behalf of our students and more importantly on behalf of our future patients. This event is a unique opportunity to learn, to teach, and to challenge what we know. So there's a saying, if people work together in an open way with porous boundaries, that is, if they listen to each other and really talk to each other, then they are bound to trade ideas that are mutual to each other and influenced by each other. That mutual influence and open system of working creates collaboration. Richard Thomas, no, Richard Thomas isn't necessarily a great philosopher, it's just John Boy from the Waltons. And if you can't take advice from John Boy, there's something wrong. Thank you for being here and enjoy the rest of your time.